This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon, and we're coming on the air at this hour for the sentencing of the three men convicted for the murder of Ahmad Arbery in Georgia. Of course, it's a case that made national headlines. Ahmad Arbery, an unarmed black man, just 25, chased down, shot, and killed while jogging. All three men face a minimum sentence of life in prison. Travis McMichael, his father Gregory McMichael, and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan. Now today, what the judge is deciding here is whether any of them should ever be eligible for parole. That would still mean 30 years before the chance at parole. The case is not over even after today. The three men still face federal charges on civil rights violations. That case begins next month. But first, let's listen right now to Judge Timothy Walmsley. All right, the uh, way the court's going to address this, I'm going to make uh, a few remarks and then address each one of the defendants with regard to sentencing. And the remarks are intended to be uh, general, but also taken into consideration in the individual sentencing portion uh, of the court's statement. So that's how we intend to proceed. So the court has heard the evidence in the case has um, accepted the jury's verdict, listened to the presentations here today uh, in aggravation and mitigation, and um, candidly have spent a lot of time thinking about this. This is a case that has um, uh, taken a lot of uh, time and energy on a lot of people's parts, um, and uh, has been a case of note not just in this community, uh, but really in in a lot of communities. But we're here today to determine is what an appropriate sentence is, quite separate from the notoriety of the case and any other outside influence that may exist. And so the court um, is going to be very careful in, in explaining that the court has considered just the evidence and what is appropriate under the circumstances of this case to consider in the Superior Court. So that all being said, let me start with this statement. As we all now know, based upon the verdict that was rendered in this court in November, Ahmaud Arbery was murdered. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy on many, many levels. Almost 20, uh, I'm sorry, on February 23rd of 2020, almost two years ago, a resident of Glynn County, a graduate of Brunswick High, a son, a brother, a young man with dreams was gunned down in this community. As we understand it, he left his home apparently to go for a run and he ended up running for his life. He entered the English home at approximately 1.04 p.m. and left that home at about 1.08 on that day. At 1.14, Greg McMichael calls 911 to let them know that there's a black male running down the street. And within moments, Ahmaud Arbery is shot and killed. The three men that are now before this court chased him in a residential neighborhood for at least five minutes in pickup trucks, armed with a shotgun and a 357 revolver. The state mentioned this today about the time period, but I do want to put that time period in context. And the only way I could think to do so may be a little theatrical, but I think it's appropriate. I want us all get a concept of time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit silently for one minute. And that one minute represents a fraction of the time that Ahmaud Arbery was running in Satilla Shores.
those circumstances, including but not limited to all aspects of the crimes charged, the past criminal record or lack thereof of the defendants. I've also considered any lawful evidence which tends to show the motive of the defendants, their lack of remorse, their general moral character, and any predisposition to commit other crimes. Now, I think in this case, the record speaks for itself. And the defendant's own words, I think, guide this court with regard to sentencing. Went back through the, uh, my notes um, and other resources to pull some of the quotes that uh, we have in this case. I'll start with Greg McMichael. In my opinion, Greg McMichael, very early on in this, tried to establish a narrative. He made comments like, Ahmaud Arbery was trapped like a rat. Stop or I'll blow your, and I won't repeat it again, head off. He effectively admitted that he wasn't sure what Ahmaud Arbery had done wrong. Quote, I don't think the guy has actually stolen anything out there, or if he did, it was early in the process. But he keeps going back over and over again into this damn house. Again, back to the narrative. Told Travis, you have no choice. Told another individual at the side or at the scene, this guy ain't no shuffler. This guy's an asshole. He commented that he wanted him, Ahmad Arbery, to know that we weren't playing. If I could have gotten a shot at the guy, I would have shot him. Travis McMichael claims he was in shock. But it's interesting because he talks about his concern for his child and his own well-being. Part of this was while the victim was actually laying there in the street. Commented, this is the worst day of my life. Well, uh, I think it's been touched on here today. Uh, there were other individuals that were impacted. I look at the video of um, this incident. When I say the video, I think everybody knows what we're talking about. But there was one part of it that struck me as absolutely chilling. And that is, I believe it's in the enhanced video provided by the GBI. There's a frame where I believe Ahmaud Arbery, it looks to be, if he's 20 yards out, that may be close, 30 yards out. And it's the frame of Travis McMichael uh, lifting the shotgun to fire at Ahmaud Arbery. And you watch that with context. And when I say context, after hearing the evidence in this case, again, thinking about a young man that had been running at that point for almost five minutes, and it is, it is a chilling, truly disturbing scene. And we got there because Travis McMichael's father saw Ahmaud Arbery hauling down the street and calls out, let's go. At that point, Travis McMichael, um, despite whatever may have been going on in his life at that time, with regard to family or otherwise, just goes, grabs a shotgun and goes because he assumes that it is the right thing to do. Ahmaud Arbery, Arbery was then hunted down and shot. And he was killed because individuals here in this courtroom took the law into their own hands. Mr. Bryan, he joined in after calling out to the McMichaels. Y'all got him? Claimed he didn't know what was going on but obviously wanted to know if this individual who was running through the neighborhood, who he didn't know, had been caught in some way. He said, quote, I figured he'd done something wrong, but I didn't know for sure. Sorry, that wasn't actually this uh, quote. Those quotes are two separate quotes. Didn't know for sure. I thought he would get away. And this is the part that is disturbing to me with Roddy Bryan. If the guy would have stopped, this would have never happened. All of these quotes give context, I think, to the video that we saw during the case. And Miss um, Wanda Cooper-Jones this morning made a statement that I think when you look at these statements and you see the videos is very true. And that is, she said, when they could not scare or intimidate him, they killed him. There's been discussion about remorse. And I agree with counsel that it is, it is dangerous for defendants uh, who have multiple prosecutions against them to make statements of remorse. But remorse isn't something that is simply 
uh, a statement of regret. Remorse, I think, can be determined by looking at somebody's reaction to difficult circumstances and the reality of the situation that they're in. Again, it doesn't require an apology, and quite honestly, sometimes apologies are made simply to get past uh, problems. Remorse is something that's felt and demonstrated. In this case, getting back to the video, again, after Amar Arbery fell, the McMichaels turned their backs. It's, a, again, a disturbing image, and they walked away. This was a killing. It was callous, and it occurred, as far as the court is concerned, based upon the evidence, because confrontation was being sought. I think the statement was made during closing arguments. It's interesting to note that the most violent crime in Satilla Shores was the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. So sentencing does not generally provide closure. I think Ms. Wanda Cooper-Jones also talked about closure. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't find that it really does, and I think that's an unfortunate thing. Because in this case, I think many people are seeking closure. The mother, the father, the community, and maybe even parts of the nation. But closure is hard to define and is a granular concept. It's seen differently by all, depending on their perspective and the prism of your lives. Instead of closure, maybe we'd best see today's proceeding as an exercise in accountability. We are all accountable for our own actions. Sometimes in today's day and age, that statement is lost upon many. And today the defendants are being held accountable for their actions here in Superior Court. Today demonstrates that everybody is accountable to the rule of law. Taking the law into your own hands is a dangerous endeavor. I'm not sure how this comes across, I'll say it anyway. I think ultimately, with regard to the murder of Ahmaud Arbery, it, all, it holds us all accountable. I read somewhere, and I don't remember where it was, that at a minimum, Ahmaud Arbery's death should force us, or his death should force us to consider expanding our definition of what a neighbor may be and how we treat them. I argue that maybe a neighbor is more than the people who just own property around your house. I believe that is, also believe that in assuming the worst in others, we show our worst character. Assuming the best in others is always the best course of action. And maybe those are the grand lessons from this case. I will let others spend as much time as they want writing about it and talking about it. But those are my general thoughts with regard to this case and sentencing. That said, with regard to the sentence in this case, as to Travis McMichael, Mr. McMichael, the court sentences you as follows. Count one, malice murder, life without the possibility of parole. Count two, felony murder, is vacated by operation of law. Count three, felony murder, vacated by operation of law. Count four, felony murder, vacated by operation of law. Count five, felony murder, vacated by operation of law. Count six, aggravated assault, merges into count one. Count seven, aggravated assault. The court sentences the defendant to 20 years consecutive to count one. Count eight, false imprisonment, merges into count one. Count nine, attempted false imprisonment, five years concurrent to count seven. That is life plus 20. Greg McMichael, the court sentences you as follows. Count one, malice murder, defendant was found not guilty. Count two, felony murder, life without the possibility of parole. Count three, felony murder, vacated, I want to say vacated, it's vacated by operation of law in all cases, I just, I'm not going to repeat it. Count four, vacated. Count five, vacated. Count six, merges into count two. Count seven, aggravated assault, 20 years consecutive to count two. Count eight, 
10 years, concurrent to count seven. Count nine, five years, concurrent to count seven. That is life plus 20 years. Roddy Bryan, I do want to separate a little bit because the state is making a different recommendation. And despite the back and forth that uh, Mr. Goff and I had during this case, I do want to point out a couple things that he raised that I think are appropriate to raise with regard to the sentence. Um, as far as the remorse, um, I think Roddy Bryan stands in very different shoes. Um, it is obvious from the beginning uh, that he questioned the tragedy that had occurred at the scene and was on, uh, I believe, I can't remember whose body cam, but the body cam, in fact, questioning whether or not what had occurred had occurred, and then took steps early on in this process, I think, that demonstrated that he had grave concerns that what had occurred should not have occurred. And I think that does make Mr. Bryan's situation a little bit different. However, Mr. Bryan has been convicted of felony murder. And I do not uh, believe it can be uh, disputed based on the facts of this case that uh, the verdict uh, was an appropriate verdict based upon the evidence presented at least. And when I say appropriate, what I mean is legal. Um, because I believe there's some, been some discussion about some differences between Mr. Bryan and, uh, and the McMichaels. Um, there may be some differences, but it does not change the fact that was it not for the fact that Mr. Bryan used his vehicle in a way to uh, impede Mr. Arbery's uh, course of travel, this may not have ever occurred, and that is sufficient for felony murder. He did cooperate with law enforcement. I will point out uh, Mr. Goff, 1710-1B. There's actually a case out of Chatham County uh, that says it would not apply under the circumstances of this case. So the court recognizing that Mr. Bryan's position is different. Uh, again, Mr. Bryan was found not guilty on count one and count two. The court sentences Mr. Bryan to uh, life with the possibility of parole on count three. Count four is vacated. Count five is vacated. Count six, the defendant was found not guilty. Count seven merges into count three. The defendant is sentenced to 10 years consecutive to count three on count eight and five years concurrent with count eight. Both of those counts, though, will be suspended sentences, which gives Mr. Bryan a life with the possibility of parole sentence. Those are the sentences the court having pronounced sentence, first with regard to Travis McMichael. Mr. McMichael, you are hereby notified that under the law of Georgia, you are entitled to appeal the guilty verdict of the jury, and if you decide to do so, you must file your appeal within 30 days of this date. You are also informed that you have the right to retain a lawyer of your own choice to represent you on your post-trial motions and appeals to the appropriate appellate court of Georgia. If you cannot afford a lawyer, the court will appoint one for you. You are entitled to and will be given a transcript of all pretrial, trial, and post-trial matters without cost to you if you cannot afford a transcript. You may file a motion for a new trial or you may appeal your case directly to the appropriate appellate court of Georgia for review. You are also advised that the statute of limitations for habeas corpus in this state is four years in the case of felonies and one year in the case of misdemeanors. The statute begins to run from the date the conviction becomes final. And just to be clear on the record, I'm going to go through the statement with regard to each defendant. So as to Gregory McMichael, you are hereby notified that under the law of Georgia, you are entitled to appeal the guilty verdict of the jury. And if you decide to do so, you must file your appeal within 30 days of this date. You are also informed that you have the right to retain a lawyer of your own choice to represent you on your post-trial motions and appeals to the appropriate appellate As we court continue to listen in here to Judge you know, Timothy Walmsley in that Georgia courtroom, we have learned this afternoon of the sentences of the three men in Ahmaud Arbery's death. Uh, Travis McMichael, who shot Arbery, uh, life without the possibility of parole, life in prison uh, for the crime. His father, Gregory McMichael, given the same sentence, life without parole. Uh, their neighbor, Roddy Bryan, uh, who used his vehicle, the truck, 
uh, was given life with the possibility of parole, and the judge making it clear uh, he believes that's because he is the only one uh, in the evidence in this trial who showed uh, any kind of concern afterward uh, for the crime. The judge, in speaking before that courtroom, acknowledged that he was likely speaking not only to that community, but to communities across this country. Uh, with great interest in this case, he talked about Ahmad Arbery, uh, the young man who went for a run and ultimately ended up running for his life. ABC's Steve Osinsami has been covering this case from the start. Uh, he joins us live from Georgia. Uh, and Steve, this judge was extremely careful to explain his rationale before handing down these sentences. He was. It was a very powerful statement that he read from the bench talking about the actions of the three men. But some a couple things stuck out to me. One of the things that he pointed out is that Travis McMichael and Greg McMichael, Travis McMichael, who murdered Ahmaud Arbery, shot him. His father, who was also in the truck, he says that there was a frame in the, in, in the video that really stuck out to him. And that was is that after the killing, they turned their backs on the young man as he was dying in the street. Uh, they were not at his side trying to help him. Um, there are a lot of people who are looking at this case here in this state who to this day still believe that these three men did nothing wrong. The prosecutor in her statement said that she felt that the defendants probably felt that way today. And proof of which is that the video that sort of exposed all of this was released by one of the defendants who at the time thought that it was going to exonerate him. These sentences today help disprove that notion. They are strong sentences, life in prison without parole for two of the other two defendants, life with parole for the third. And even in his case, he's 50 some years old right now. He will be 80 years old before he is even eligible for parole. So this is essentially life in prison for him as well. It is a powerful verdict. It was a powerful statement. None of this, of course, will bring back this young black man who was killed. But as you heard the judge today, say there is a need to change the perspective of what is right in the streets as it relates to a young black man who did nothing wrong and was jogging through a neighborhood. David. Steve, the judge also told Americans who are watching that perhaps of our neighbors we should assume the best in them, uh, not the worst, that that perhaps is one of the greater lessons of this case. Uh, Steve pointed out that he talked about that piece of evidence with the McMichaels turning away from the crime after it was committed. He also talked about the five minutes uh, that it was estimated that Ahmaud Arbery was running, running away from that pickup truck, and in a fairly dramatic fashion uh, showed the court what just one minute feels like. The judge silent for one minute, saying that represents just a fraction of the time that Ahmaud Arbery was running from that vehicle. Again, moments ago, Travis McMichael, who shot Ahmaud Arbery and killed him, sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. His father given the same sentence, life without parole. The third man, William Roddy Bryan, the neighbor. Life in prison with the possibility of parole. As Steve Osinsami points out moments ago, he's already uh, in his 50s. That means he would be well into his 80s before any chance of getting out of prison. Our coverage will continue on ABC News Live, abcnews.com, and of course, I'll be back with the entire team a short time from now, a little later today for World News Tonight. I'm David Muir in New York. Good day. This has been a special report from ABC News. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.